Welcome to Stroud, one of the largest towns in the Cotswolds, and a beautiful town of cascading steep streets and grand buildings situated at the meeting place of five valleys from the surrounding region. Once upon a time a great town of England's cloth trade, Stroud has had a captivating history over the course of the last 800 years or so, rising and falling with the influence of industry and politics as the centuries have gone by, and today starring as one of the UK's most independently minded and highly rated places to live. We'll talk all about the story of how Stroud came to be the way it is as we take a walk around the town centre, but let's start at the very beginning. A rather good place to start, they say. Here we find ourselves in the churchyard of St Lawrence's, Stroud's mighty parish church that may only date back in its current form to 1866, but which stands on the site of a much, much older chapel, possibly built as long ago as the year 1279. Rebuilt in the Victorian era as the previous church fell into disrepair, the only medieval part of the building that remains today is its soaring spire, dating from the 1360s, a time when the modern town of Stroud was in its infancy. St Lawrence's Church, situated right at the heart of the town to this day, was of course one of the first buildings to be erected in Stroud, and it's played an important role in the town's history, as we'll talk about later. But just outside the churchyard gates, we find a short street known as the Shambles, which is home to this grand building, Stroud's Old Market House. Dating all the way back to 1594, the Market House is thought to be one of the oldest of its kind in the Cotswolds, and it was built at the centre of what was originally a wide open marketplace here, but which over the years gradually became crowded with buildings. The Market House, a venue for local trade, was later converted by the Victorians into Stroud's Town Hall, and slightly remodelled on the outside to fit the fashion of the day, while today the building serves as a church hall for St Lawrence's just next door. But while the old Market House is no longer used for its original purpose, on the shambles here we can see plenty of evidence of the trade that's historically taken place just outside. The Shambles, a name typically given to the site of an open-air meat market in English towns, is still the site of Stroud's twice-weekly town market, where stalls are erected under the canopy hanging from the town's former corn exchange. There's no market today, but under the canopy there's still something interesting to have a look at. These wooden boards are original articles from the time when this was the site of the local meat market, serving as tables that drop down from the wall on which butchers would sell their produce to passing customers. The tables are a lasting symbol of Stroud's historic trading sphere, but they weren't only used to display meat, rather as effective soap boxes for people to speak out to the bustling crowds of townspeople. The renowned Methodist preacher John Wesley gave a sermon standing atop a butcher's table here back in 1742, while many more local men would have jumped up onto the tables to give passionate speeches on the matters of local affairs and politics more widely. Stroud is a town that has always been closely associated with radical political thinking, and as we now find ourselves on the town's spectacularly sloping high street, you'll find countless examples of the locals' fiery political activism through history having taken place right here. Back in 1766, Stroud's marketplace here was the site of fierce rioting by the town's cloth workers, incensed by the increasingly unaffordable price of a loaf of bread. On that occasion, the protesters were met with a strong response by the authorities, the Sheriff of Gloucestershire personally sending in his own elite squad to quell the unrest and have the protesters' ringleaders hanged. There's much more to Stroud's political and independently minded streak that not only occurred through history, but also endures to this day, and we'll talk more about that later. But here, we find ourselves at the top of the town's very steep high street. Here we find a sculpture of a ram, which was erected in 1987 and which pays tribute to Stroud's long history as a cloth making town, and the wider wool industry that brought such wealth to the Cotswolds through time. It's a small sculpture that stands in an important part of the town, this point at the top of the high street, historically known as the Cross, where the town well, stocks, corn market and more stood, effectively making this the old centre of the town. 
As the centre of town, the cross was historically surrounded by a dense collection of buildings, streets and alleyways, although most were demolished back in the 1960s, when a bypass road was planned to be built around the town centre. Unfortunately, therefore, that means we've lost some of the best examples of Old Stroud to history, although some of the buildings at the top of the high street have thankfully been preserved for posterity, as a reminder of where the original heart of life in town was. As time went on, however, the centre of focus inevitably shifted, particularly after the railway station was built in the Victorian era, which we'll see a little later on in our walk. But while we know that the map of the town centre has evolved gradually throughout Stroud's history, where exactly on a map of the wider region would you find this town? Well, as we mentioned, Stroud is located on the western edge of the famous region of countryside known as the Cotswolds, and the town is just under 10 miles to the south of the county town of Gloucester, and about 25 miles northeast of the much larger west country city of Bristol. There are many parallels in Stroud's history with nearby towns, but there's a lot that makes this town unique too. And having made our way off the High Street now, we find ourselves on the much narrower Union Street, spanned here by a fetching gallows sign for the Old Swan Inn, a historic town centre pub that closed down back in 2014. But the Swan Inn, which lent its name to the sloping alleyway of Swan Lane just next door, was actually originally located a short distance away from here, on the High Street, just opposite the Shambles, at which time it served as a coaching inn for those travelling through Stroud. In 1822, however, the inn moved here, when it was built on the site of another old pub, the George Inn, which ahead of the Swan was for many years the most important hotel in town, also serving as a coaching inn, but also as a prestigious venue for local events, including grand balls, important assemblies and more. An information board on the side of the building in front of us tells the story of the Old George, which would have historically been one of the most bustling places in town, filled with horse and carts bringing weary voyagers to rest, revellers enjoying the merriment, local men discussing the state of things in Stroud, and traders doing deals outside of the usual market. We know that the market historically took place around the churchyard, market house and shambles, but just a bit further down Union Street here, you'll find the site of a modern reincarnation of Stroud's historic market, the beautiful new Cornhill Marketplace. Home to a handful of locally run shops open throughout the week, Cornhill Marketplace is best known today as the bustling venue of Stroud's weekly farmer's market, held on Saturdays, and which attracts people from all over for its array of fresh food and intriguing artisan products on sale. Though not busy with stalls today, the Cornhill Marketplace is still a fetching new landmark in the heart of Stroud, and on farmer's market days, stalls spill out onto the streets surrounding the building, snaking up and down the hilly streets of Stroud's town centre. The new marketplace really fits in nicely with Stroud's intriguing blend of old and new, a theme that runs through the town wherever you look. But just across the street, there stands Stroud's Baptist Church Hall, built in 1900 and unusually constructed of red brick, which rather stands out compared with the mostly Cotswold stone-built edifices that line the streets of Stroud. But as we've seen from both Union Street and the High Street, some of those streets are really rather steep, a symptom of the local geography, for Stroud, as we mentioned, is situated in a kind of natural bowl, where five different valleys all meet. Flowing through those five valleys are five small rivers, which originally contributed to this area being rather sparsely populated. Small settlements have existed in the Stroud area for thousands of years, but nothing like the size of what became the Roman towns of Gloucester and Cirencester nearby, as the ground here was generally very marshy and overgrown, fed by so many separate water sources. That, however, is where the town is thought to get its name. Stroud, thought to derive from the Old English Stroud, referring to the marshy ground at the confluence of the surrounding rivers. And although that may not have been conducive to agriculture, later on in time, Stroud's geography gradually began to play into the hands of future industry. Here, we're walking down Threadneedle Street, 
once the site of the first factory belonging to the Holloway brothers, who established a clothing business here in 1849, and went on to develop it into a worldwide company over the following decades. Cloth making, as we've already mentioned, was the crucible of business here in Stroud, and its origins can also be traced back to those five rivers which flow into this area from the valleys. In the 13th and 14th centuries, mills began to pop up alongside the rivers flowing into what would become Stroud, using their water flow as power to drive machines designed to spin wool, which was in plentiful supply in the Cotswolds, given the region's high density of sheep grazing on the hills around here. This helped to lay the groundwork for the cloth industry that brought great wealth to Stroud over the centuries and which helped to fund the building of grand town centre landmarks like this, the subscription rooms, built in the 1830s, when it was designed to serve as a brand new town centre venue for events. That's a role which the subscription rooms has retained over the course of nearly 200 years now, still hosting many town centre events and meetings, while back in 1962, a then little known band called The Beatles played a set on stage here one of the band's first gigs in England, away from Merseyside, as they began their road to stardom. It wasn't an easy start though, as when the Beatles played here at Stroud's subscription rooms, just three people showed up, and they proceeded to throw penny coins at the performers on stage. Later on in life, Paul McCartney even singled out the concert at Stroud as the Beatles' worst ever gig, although the legacy of the infamous performance has lived on here though perhaps not as the proudest moment in the town's history. The Beatles did return the following year to play a much more successful gig once Beatlemania had taken off. But near to the subscription rooms, we've been circling Sims Clock, or Stroud's Town Clock, one of the town's most notable landmarks. A humble clock erected back in 1921, it was actually originally meant to be Stroud's War Memorial. Although, because another memorial was built in the park gardens just on the edge of town, this left the space in the town centre to be used as a clock. Having made our way down the street from Sims Clock, we now find ourselves on Russell Street, named after the 19th century politician Lord John Russell, who served as Stroud's MP early on in his career, before later going on to serve two separate terms as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Fittingly, Russell Street is also home to the Lord John Pub here, which was originally the home of Stroud's main post office, which then moved next door in the 1960s. The pub, as well as bearing Russell's name, is also home to a number of memorials to the former PM, who was a notable architect of the Reform Act of 1832, one of the most important developments in British politics. It extended the right to vote more widely across the country. Russell is one of a number of significant men to whom memorials in Stroud have been made over the years, and we'll talk about another in a few moments, but we now find ourselves in what has, in recent decades, become a much busier part of the town centre, the area surrounding Stroud's railway station. While, as we mentioned earlier, the cross was historically the busy heart of activity in town, the arrival of the railways in the 1840s expanded focus towards here, and around us now are a number of buildings that were constructed as this part of town gained significance. Holloway House, for example, dating from 1934. But it's of course Stroud's railway station which occupies the most prominent position here. The building that we see in front of us, built back in 1914 by the Great Western Railway, to replace an older station of 1845 that was constructed to the design of none other than Isambard King Brunel. Originally, that station stood on the line between Gloucester and the nearby village of Kemble. But over time, this evolved into what we now know as the Great Western Railway, and trains from as far away as London now serve Stroud Station. As you can imagine, for a town surrounded by valleys and wide expanses of countryside, the arrival of the railways provided unprecedented access to the outside world for Stroud, with goods produced in the town's cloth mills loaded onto freight trains both here and at the town's old second station, known as Stroud Wallbridge, destined for buyers around the country or for export overseas. Of course, as well as goods going out, many people would come into Stroud via its railway station, and for their convenience, a grand hotel was built just a few steps away from the platform. This grand building that we're looking at being the Imperial Hotel, opened back in 1863 
and which became quickly the most prestigious hotel in town in the Victorian era. Though no longer in use since its recent closure in 2020, plans are in place to revamp the historic hotel once again. The former Imperial Hotel intended to be reopened simply as the Stroud, hopefully bringing back a wonderful welcome to passengers alighting at the station. The inevitable decline of Stroud's historic cloth industry in the 20th century has changed the town significantly in recent decades, although the many buildings around here, funded by the wealth brought in by the industry, serve as a reminder of that flourishing period. Here at the bottom of Russell Street, there stands Stroud House, a grand building of 1896 that was originally opened as the Holloway Institute, named for another local MP, George Holloway one of the Holloway brothers who founded their worldwide clothing business here in Stroud. Today, a memorial to George Holloway stands beside Stroud House, just behind the temporary scaffolding here, as we now venture out onto King Street, which cuts through the northwestern edge of the modern town centre. Before the arrival of the railways, the area just further down the road, beyond where the rail bridge now is, was a burgeoning residential district of Stroud. Although when the train line and the parallel Stroudwater Navigation Canal were built straight through, the area was cut off from the main centre of town, which continued to develop through the 19th, 20th and 21st centuries. Across the road we can see an impressive bank building of the early 1930s, standing on a site that used to be the home of a grand 18th century residence known as Rowcroft House. But while the many landmarks that we've seen around Stroud so far point to its illustrious history, this is a town which is flourishing as much in the modern day as it has done at any point in the last few centuries. In 2021, Stroud was named by the Sunday Times as the best place to live in Britain, for a combination of its proximity to gorgeous, boundless Cotswold countryside, its easy connections to major cities like London, but most of all, its burgeoning cultural sphere. King Street here may be home to some of the more typical chain shops you'll see around the country but Stroud is well known today for its vast array of independent shops, museums and galleries dotted all over the town centre and beyond. Meanwhile, the popular farmer's market, one of the largest in the country today, is just one example of how Stroud has become a destination for food lovers, with yet more boutique, locally run cafes and pubs to be found, alongside a number of Michelin-starred restaurants too. And that's not all because Stroud's offbeat, independently-minded streak has expanded into areas you wouldn't immediately expect, namely football, as the local football club, Forest Green Rovers, have gained notoriety as the world's first vegan football club, and for backing many eco-friendly initiatives as they've risen through the divisions in recent years. Forest Green Rovers, based in the nearby village of Nailsworth, were once actually known as Stroud FC, and they now sit in England's third tier, the highest in their history. And had the old Greyhound Inn been open today, it would have certainly been a great place to catch the game. Despite the Greyhound still standing proudly outside, however, the pub closed just a few years ago, and it's now home to the popular Galgos restaurant, Spanish for Greyhound, which sits at the foot of the dramatically sloping High Street. As you'll remember from the start of our walk, the High Street sweeps beautifully all the way down from the cross to this point, in what's known as the lower end of Stroud. As well as offering views up the hill, the bottom of the High Street is also home to a row of historic buildings, footed by this, the Old Bank House, a fine early 18th century building that has stood here for around 300 years, although that nearly wasn't the case. While the High Street today is a calm, pedestrianised lane that falls gracefully down the hill, back in the 1980s it was typically clogged with traffic, and local developers sought to demolish many of the buildings lining it to ease congestion through the heart of town. A number of Stroud residents, however, were not all too pleased with the plans, and in 1980 they staged a locally famous two-day rooftop protest atop the many buildings beside the old bank house, which remain standing today as a result of their victory, which likely also led to the eventual pedestrianisation of the High Street too. Before the industrial era, the town centre effectively came to an end at this point, and where the old Greyhound Inn now stands, there was once a wide open field beside the end of the High Street and King Street, 
although it was eventually developed from the 17th century onwards and more modern Victorian roads were later built through the area. Venturing further down the hill along Gloucester Street, however, the appeal of a visit to Stroud is certainly not just limited to the captivating town centre, as the town is surrounded by some beautiful countryside and a number of wonderfully landscaped green spaces. Just a little further out of town in this direction, you'll find Stratford Park, a huge 56-acre park home to the town's local museum, a historic Victorian bandstand, and a huge lake that's circled by a rather lovely miniature railway too. These are all just a few of the things that make Stroud a really wonderful town in the modern day. And as we make our way past the Queen Vic pub, one of the town's many independently run establishments, I hope you've enjoyed it as we've strolled through Stroud's history on this walk today. Once upon a time renowned as one of the Cotswolds' great cloth towns, Stroud is full of history wherever you look. From its range of beautiful architecture, to remnants of its market and industry, and from the stories of the locals' fervour for political activism, entrepreneurialism, and, eventually, a love for the Beatles. However, as we now look towards Stroud's former police station, originally opened in 1858, we find ourselves on the edge of the town centre, on the main road past town, which was originally the site of a small stream known as Badbrook. It's here, then, that we'll sadly be bringing an end to our walk around Stroud for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're looking forward to visiting Stroud for yourself sometime soon.